welcome back to the episode of Just Say Gway. I'm your host, George Gway. Tonight, I'm joined by Ty Smolanik, a hockey player who's entering his freshman season at Quinnipiac University after spending two years at the USA Junior Hockey National Development Program. Uh, Ty, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, so how have you been, man? I mean, I know uh, when you signed your letter of intent to go to Quinnipiac, I don't think you envisioned uh, the last six months on how they went, but how have you been? What do you What did you do to stay busy with hockey? Yeah, I mean, like, it's definitely a different time than it usually would be. So, I mean, the past six months or so, I've been kind of adjusting, and especially right now I'm at college, and we're not even practicing our home rink or anything. So it's just been adjusting the past six months and trying to make the best of the situation, and uh, that's really what I've been trying to do. Yeah, that's a good answer. So speaking of hockey, what was the culture like growing up in Colorado? Were you a big Avalanche fan, or you still are, things like that? Yeah, I mean, the game of hockey in Colorado is definitely kind of growing um year to year it's becoming a bigger sport out there when I was when I was just born it wasn't necessarily that big out there and then the Avs came to a uh, town and won two cups in their first six years or whatever it was so I started hockey up and um it's just been growing ever since so I mean being a big avalanche fan growing up was definitely a big part of the reason I got into hockey yeah it's definitely a good team especially with the core that they have now and uh, the future so yeah. Uh, before Team USA, you were playing uh, hockey in Colorado, um, and you made the decision to go to Team USA. How did they find you, and um, what's the decision process like? Um, I mean, my, I played two years of U16 hockey before I went to the national team, and um, the first year they, uh, I had a pretty good year as an underager, so they uh, came watch me a few times. And my second year, I had a really good year, and uh, they came out in November, and uh, one of the scouts flew out from the team and had dinner with me and my family and that's kind of when it hit me that playing for the national team was a possibility so yeah so it seems like it's worked out well especially in your first year um you were second in points on the team behind Thomas Bordalo who actually was on this show not too long ago um what was the key to that success yeah I mean I definitely had a better first year for me it was just kind of playing my game I didn't want to overthink it and um just I think uh my first year i was obviously I was able to put the puck in that a few more times than uh, this past year, but honestly, I was just trying to have fun with it and get better each day. Yeah, that's a good answer. So on this show, I've hosted a lot of um, collegiate baseball players, and uh, I'd say the equivalent of Team USA in terms of alumni uh, is the Cape Cod Baseball League, and uh, a lot of guys have played in it, such as Aaron Judge, Chris Bryant, Evan Longoria. There's been a lot of great players that have played for that USA team, including recently like Austin Matthews, uh, Matthew Kachuk and Patrick Kane. Did you ever kind of pinch yourself when you were wearing that uniforms, thinking about who's been there before? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I, I uh, That's not my first thought when I was playing there is because I was thinking of it. I'm getting to play for my country, and that's the biggest honor that I could have had. And then it does hit you eventually. You look at the alumni, and you have even guys more recent than them, like Jack Hughes, who's played there, and Brady Kachuk, who was just a year before in the draft. And it uh, – there were such high expectations, but it's the best junior hockey, best uh, place to develop as a player and as a person. So, I mean, I had a blast there. Yeah, I can see why. So, um, obviously, you got your Quinnipiac hat on. Um, one of the more consistent programs. Uh, usually can make a run at the national championship any year in the last uh, five or so years. What was the reason for you going there? Yeah, like you said, consistency. Uh, they – they haven't had too many stars. I've gone through a program where they were drafted high or anything. So I'm taking it as an opportunity to help grow the program and, and uh, kind of be a big part of the, uh, of the program's uh, success in the future. So, I mean, we have a really good team this year that hopefully if the season happens, can make a real good push to be uh, in the frozen four. So, I, I mean, I'm just excited to be here, excited to uh, finally get stuff rolling with my teammates and uh, see where that takes us. Yeah, so speaking of the season and your teammates, um, usually in a perfect world, I think most guys, um, just from my experience of watching guys at Providence College, you know, they're kind of back on campus midsummer, uh, getting ready for the season. Um, if not, most guys, some guys go to development camps. How did the coaches and let's say the leaders of the team kind of uh, make sure you guys were, you know, in touch as a team and you know, making sure you guys were staying active? How did that work out? Yeah, obviously in the summer with us not being able to meet, we uh, 
we were having Zoom calls probably once, twice a week and um, trying to keep us together as a team. And then uh, recently we've been skating as a team, but without the coaches and the captains have kind of been leading those practices. So, I mean, the coaches did what they could in the summer to keep us involved. And now since we're on campus and coaches can't be too much involved, it's uh, the captains taking charge and just trying to make us as much as a team, whether that's hanging out on the weekends or whatever it may be. They're just trying to keep us connected connect as a group yeah I think even in different circumstances it can really reflect how really strong leaders they are um, so Quinnipiac you know given its success um, and how people see it over the years they can pretty much get any player in the country that they want if they go after them um, so we know that they're getting a good hockey player in you but what are they getting in you as a person yeah I mean uh, I've grown, my parents uh, did a great job growing me up and um, for me I have a lot of values that go outside of hockey just treating people the way you'd want to be treated give everyone respect whether it's your head coach or the custodian at the rink so I mean just treating everyone equally and um, always bringing a smile to your face and um, trying to always have the best attitude and make people happy and people love hanging around people uh, people like that so I just try and be the best person I can be to uh, help my team and just be a better person that's a great uh, mindset to have so you're eligible for the draft this year um, ranked pretty highly in the mock drafts how has COVID affected the, the draft process yeah I mean it, I think it really affected me this year just for the fact uh, this past season I had a lot of injuries I was dealing with and didn't had a pretty upsetting season and not the didn't play to my standard. So, I mean, with the season getting cut short and the combine getting canceled and all these big things that I needed to help my draft stock kind of went away. But, I mean, that sucks as life. It's different these days where you're doing Zoom calls with teams instead of meeting them in person. So, I mean, it's a different world we're living in. But, like I've said before, just trying to make the best of it and try to become a better person when this is all over. Yeah, I think that's a good answer, how you really have to adapt. So, last question. You know, this is your draft year. Um, a lot of your teammates are also eligible and probably will have their names called. How special would that be not only for yourself to hear your name called, but also share it with so many of the, your brothers? Yeah, I mean, for sure. There's, there are guys I went to battle with for two years every day, whether it's practice or a game. So, I mean, we all went through it together. We went through the grind together. I know how hard each and every one of those guys have worked. So, I mean, hearing guys call before and after me, it's going to be an unbelievable feeling for them and for me. So, I mean, I look forward to that day, not only for myself, but for my teammates as well. It's kind of know what we've done now in the past two years, but our whole life to get us to this moment. Well, you guys should feel pretty proud about yourselves because I think uh, some stat came out during the, um, the NHL playoffs when the bubble just first started that there were dozens of guys that played for the USA team. And, uh, it's great that you guys are really following those footsteps. And uh, Ty, I really want to thank you for coming on my show. We'll stay in touch. And uh, best of luck uh, with the season. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yep, have a good one.